often when I'm creating a project, I want to change the appearance of that project to the type of wood I'm working with. The appearance is not always in the vector database, so I need to go get the appearance, that is the wood uh, texture that I want to use, and get it into the actual Vectric database so that I can use it. And there's a couple of different ways to do that, and that's what this video will cover. This is a box, I'll show you it up over here in the slide, that I made for my wife in 2019 for Valentine's Day. It's actually a Vectric file, one of their free files. You can go get this off their projects files if you want to cut it. So it's a, a nice little box. And when I was making this box, I wanted to see what it would look like in Purple Heart. And so that uh, wasn't in my database to begin with. And so I've taken it out of my database now so I can show you how I would add that in. So when I preview this project, you're going to see what it looks in Purple Heart, at least as representative as it can be. So that's what I'm talking about when I say I'm going to show you how to add material textures or material uh, species into the process so that you can see them in something like this box right up here. Let's take a look of what I'm talking about. In this example, this is a box I made for my wife a few years ago and I wanted to make it Purple Heart. And so when I want to see how this thing carves, I would like to see it in Purple Heart. Let's look at what it would look like right now with the color that is selected. I'm going to go to All Toolpaths and I'm just going to hit Preview Toolpaths. And you can see that the material is a solid yellow color. So let me preview All Toolpaths. And this isn't quite what I want to see, the look of this box. Let me preview all toolpaths here for this side. And you can see this is what it looks like. Well, that's not what I want to look like. I want this to actually look like the wood. And so if I come up here to this Sheet 1 Edit Material Settings, you can see right now this is Machined Area Color, Material Color. I'm going to pick a different material color. Right now, the reason it looks yellow is because I've picked Use Solid Color and I've used yellow. If I picked a different one, I could put purple there or brown or whatever color I want. But I actually want it to look like a wood texture. So you can do that by hitting that drop down and then you can pick from any number of species of wood and several of these come preloaded inside of the Vectric database. And as such, if I want to, I can go select one of them, let's say this medium wood, and you can see it shows me what it looks like in this color on both sides. If I don't want that wood, let's say in my case, I want Purple Heart, you'll notice Purple Heart is not in here. So I wanna go through the steps necessary so that you would have Purple Heart as a selection. It has Paduke, which is close. So I want to go through how you would select, how you would get Purple Heart in here. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. So let's get started with that. So one method is, this is the actual Purple Heart from my uh, project where I cut my wife's heart jewelry box before. And so this has been sitting on my uh, scrap shelf for a couple years. If I want this grain texture, all I have to do is shoot a picture of this with my camera. So the first thing I would do is take a picture in the or vertical mode. Next, I would take the picture in the horizontal mode. So I have the grain going both ways. I will crop that picture in my phone app, my editor, whatever you edit photos with, so that all I have is the grain. Another way of doing this is to do a Google search and find the texture online. So in this case, I said I wanted Purple Heart. I simply put in a Google text, images of Purple Heart wood, and it gives me a whole selection. And so then the next thing I want to do is I want to go through the process, and I'm not going to walk through all that, of saving an image. Now I'm using a Mac. Uh, if you were using a if you're using Windows, which most of you probably are, you have different selections, but you could either use a, 
a clipper tool or a snag it or just I think in Windows you have this save image as also. So I'm going to hit save image and I'm going to end up with a file on my hard drive. And I'm not going to go through that whole process here. Let me just go to the file and show you what I'm talking about. And now that we've saved the files uh, from both methods, one was from the camera and one was from the web, you see I've got uh, these files saved here in this folder. And this is where I initially did all my editing and I came up with the files. And you'll see, for example, from the camera, if I double click on that, you'll see I have the purple heart running in the horizontal grain. Then if I come over to the web, you can see I've got it going from the horizontal grain there, and it's a lot darker, doesn't quite look like the purple heart that was in my heart. Then I got the vertical camera, and it looks like my piece of wood, and then I got the vertical web. And so I've got the grain running in both ways, and this becomes important depending on what your project is doing. Is your project running with the grain or against the grain. So now that we have these various um, pictures, we can enter that into that materials database or appearance database or textures database, whatever you want to call it. Vectric uses textures in a couple different ways and so I don't want to confuse people. This is not a texture like you're going to apply in the modeling process. This is an appearance of the actual wood as a picture of the what's going to be carved. One method you can do it with is by setting up a directory on your file explorer or drive that uh, captures all of your textures. And what you see here on my left is just that I've got a file folder uh, on my drive that I put textures in. And if I open that up, you can see there's all these different textures. And so what I can do now is I can take these four textures and I can copy those and I can put them in this folder. And now they're located in my textures folder that I know where it's at. The other method I can do, I'll show in a minute. So let's go back to Vectric. Now we're back in the Vectric program and the way I can add that purple heart to this project now is come over into the sheet menu, hit this drop down here and under wood, let me scroll up here, under wood right here you can see that there's an add a new texture. And so I know that I store information in a folder called textures. Now I'm in that folder of textures and you can see I've got several different JPEGs here that I can choose from. And in this case I'm just going to add the one and I'm going to add the purple heart vertical, it looks like I misspelled it, camera because I want it going up and down. For this grain I hit open and now you can see the purple heart shows up on the project. If I had wanted the horizontal, I could have added the new texture, purple heart, horizontal, open, and you can see the grain is going in the horizontal direction. So that's how you add a new material. That's one way of adding new material. Now let's show a different way. Well, here's another way of doing it. So now we're back in the Vectric program. I've deleted all the textures uh, that I had previously installed uh, with that purple heart. And let's go check what we see in our tool pass so I can show you that. So if I go to the preview, let's close this for a second. So if I go to the preview mode, uh, you can see I've got that yellow that came back up because I didn't save any of the other work. I go to Sheet. I go to Use Color. I go to Wood here. And you, if you look through here, you'll see there is no uh, Purple Heart because I've deleted it from all of the sources of the data. So now, here's one other way for us to add it. 
The first thing you want to do is Vectric, when they give you their initial data set, stores everything in a specific location. So I want to go to Open Application Data Folder. And when I open the Application Data Folder, you can see this is what I get. One of the folders you'll see is Bitmap Textures. If I open that up, you can see I've got various categories of textures. So I've got wood, and that has several wood grains in it that Vectric supplies, metals, and those are the same selections you have if you open up the uh, program over here in the sheet here. And then you have miscellaneous, and so they give you these textures. One of the things you'll notice is there is no Purple Heart in this list of textures. We already uh, copied the Purple Heart before, so let me bring that folder in. And now you can see I have this Purple Heart folder where I stored those picture files over here uh, from before when I edited them. So now if I take, and I'm just going to add two pictures in there because I don't like the web ones. I like the ones I took with my camera. So I'm going to add the Purple Heart Horizontal. I'm going to copy that into that folder. And then I'm going to copy the Purple Heart Vertical. Let me make sure it copied. There it is, horizontal, purple heart vertical, but before I do that, I want to rename that because it's driving me crazy. Vertical, okay, that's renamed. I'm going to copy that into Vectric's folder. Let me minimize this. So now you can see this is the Vectric default folder. Those two JPEGs are in that default. So let me close that. And just to validate, we'll come back over here to Vectric and we'll hit Open Application Data Folder. We'll go to Bitmap Textures, we'll go to Wood, and you can see those are in that folder. This is the confusing part now. So I've added them in their texture folders, and this database, this appearance database, texture database, you would think would have them in here. But if you look through here, you'll notice that they are not in there. That's okay. That's because when the file initiated and brought everything into it, those weren't part of the selection process. So all we have to do now is hit File, close the, close the application, reopen the application, open that file. As you can see, everything looks the same so far. Come over here to Tool Pass, go to Preview. You see we still have the yellow here. And now if we come over here to the sheet and we go to Wood and you come down, you can see the Purple Heart selection there. The Purple Heart Horizontal, the Purple Heart Vertical. If I select Purple Heart, you now have that Purple Heart. If I hit Preview All Sides, which I should have hit that first time I did it, you will see what your project would look like in Purple Heart. So it's that easy to add a material texture such as a different type of wood that might not already be in the database or if you want to add one that looks better than what the material database already has in there by taking a picture of some actual wood. For example, I do not like the original walnut light picture. So that's walnut light. And then if you look at walnut, I don't like that grain texture on walnut. I haven't seen walnut that really looks like that. So instead, I would add in a different one, and I already did. You can see it right here. Walnut Vertical Dark. That was one where I took a picture of some wood. Let's click on that. And that's what my walnut picture looks like. I like that a little bit better. So it's that simple. Well, that's it for the uh, teaching at this time. In this video, we covered two different methods by which you could add additional material selections. They're bitmap uh, pictures that represent the texture of a material you are carving into. Being able to add these textures in allows you to have more options for displaying your work when you want to see what a particular carving looks like or show a client. You can add all kinds of textures in with these pictures, including pictures of, say, a cookie, which is something I did once before so I could demonstrate how a sign would look on a cookie. If you would like some more detail on that, give me a comment. What I didn't cover in this is once you add the textures to the Vectric data, sometimes it gets a little tricky 
in how to get the textures out if you don't want to see them anymore. And we can cover that in a different video if you want to see that. Again, give me a comment if you'd like to see that. So in summary, there were two ways. One, we add it to the applications folder for textures that comes with the database when Vectric supplies it to you. Once it's in there, once you restart the program, it will automatically be included in that drop-down menu for textures. The other is using the Add New Textures button that's inside the drop-down menu, making sure you do that with the category you want to see that texture in. And once you do that, you go find the texture bitmap, JPEG picture, that you have stored somewhere on your hard drive and you select it and it will add it to the database. I hope you found this useful. Uh, my goal is to try to make it easier for people to understand how to do some simple things or what should be simple things in the uh, Vectric software, but sometimes is hard to find information on. With that, I hope you have a great day. And if you think I deserve a like, give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed and would like more tips and tricks on the Vectric software, please be sure you subscribe so that you will be made aware of any new videos that comes out. Have a great day until we meet in this medium again. Thank you.